Today I want to take you through a pretty fun sequence. We're going to start with a bread and butter sweep that a lot of people use. I'm going to do some advanced counters to that, some advanced recounters, and then counter the counter the counter. You'll see what I mean. So, I start in Richie's closed guard. I stand up. I just like to pass the guard standing up, say, I stand up. To do this sweep, Richie underhooks one of my legs, puts the other hand by his shoulder. Some people call this a waiter sweep, right? Carrying a plate. In any case, he's going to bridge his hips up, push my legs sideways, and take me over here. If I push him away here, I'm actually opening myself up to an armbar. Go for the armbar here, and he can tap me out, kind of sitting on my chest, without actually hitting the ground. So, that's the uh, handstand sweep, or the waiter sweep, or I'm sure it's got other names, the underhook sweep. So now, I stand up, Richie underhooks the leg. This is a problem. What are my options? I got a couple different options. One. If I catch it early, I can kick the leg forward. Keep your legs close, please. I can't move my leg back, but sometimes I can kick it forwards and back. Another option is I can take this knee and I can turn it in here. As Richie puts his hand on the ground and arches up, he wants to turn my knee outwards. That's part of what buckles it. Instead, I'm going to turn it inwards here and drive my knee in. It's actually quite uncomfortable and pretty easy to open up the legs from there. Another option for me, and this looks stupid, but it really works, is I get sort of a figure four uh, ankle lock type thing on his knee. Now as he bridges, I pull up. So bridge, go ahead. I'm not going to tap him out here. In order to tap them out, I would need to be on the ankle. And I would need to you know, secure his lower body. But it gets him worried. He's going, oh my god, does, does casting know some kind of leg lock that I don't know about? But really what it does is it allows me to anchor. And as he bridges up, it allows me to pull him off the ground a little bit. And it makes my foot heavier. It's a lot like if he had a, if he had a gi on, as he bridges, to pull to pull in. We don't have a gi, what else can I do? I can do this. Now sometimes, when we reach the stalemate here with the handstand suite, what the guy on the bottom does is he does a really spectacular move that actually works. He's gonna open his legs, come to the turtle, and stand up right away. So what that might look like at speed, we start in the guard, I jump up, he hooks, it doesn't work, he goes here, and then stands up, and I look like an idiot. So as soon as his legs open, I've got to be aware that that backward somersault sweep is coming. We should do that slowly here one time so that people see what we're doing. So he underhooks the leg, for whatever reason he can't do the sweep. He's going to go towards his underhooking side. He's going to do a backward somersault over his shoulder and end up here. From here, some people drive back against the knee or they stand up. They stand up, lift his foot off the ground, and then they turn in. Down I go. So what do I do when I start with a handstand? Oh, he starts with a handstand sweep. I counter that by turning my knee in. He does a backward somersault sweep into the stand-up to counter my counter. So how do I counter his counter to my counter to his counter? And this is what high-level jiu-jitsu looks like. You need to have a counter to the counter to the counter to the counter. We're here. I stand up. He tries to sweep, doesn't work, he starts going for this. Now, I don't have a big window of opportunity here. I can't stay standing. I have to get down on my knees right away. So we're here, Richie's done the backflip. I've gotten my knee to the ground right away. If I don't get my knee to the ground, I'm gonna get swept. My knee's at the ground. His arm, if you see, is kind of trapped by this leg. I like that, so I'm gonna pinch my legs together. One of the easiest submissions to do from here, see I'm facing his head, I'm going to face his legs. I'm going to bring my far arm, the arm that's outside here, into his armpit, and I can 
do a very, very quick submission with my legs. Just rotate here a bit for me, We're here, I'm facing his head, I face his legs, and I pry this open. It's, uh, I'm basically fulcruming his arm this way. If that doesn't work, or I don't feel like it, what I can do, I've got his arm trapped, I go for the harness, over under, over one armpit, <laughs> over one shoulder, under the other armpit, and I roll. This is not the ideal uh, crucifix position. So at this point, I have to switch my legs, triangle my legs. Here, I've got the double attack of going for the one-handed choke versus just keeping a very tight grip on his upper body and extending my hips. His wrist is trapped behind my calf, and by extending my hips, I'm hyperextending his elbow. Let's just show that whole sequence from a slightly different angle. We're here. I stand, he goes for the waiter sweep, I dip in, he decides to bail out, I do a backward somersault, I drop that knee to the ground, either to tap him out here, or I go under this armpit, over this shoulder, and I roll here. Now, I've got a type of a crucifix, I keep a tight, tight, tight seatbelt, I switch so that I'm controlling his arm with my top leg. I was controlling it with my bottom leg. I switch so it's my top leg. It's on the wrist. I squeeze tight. I can either arm arm here or I can grab the shoulder and do a one-armed short choke on his neck.